This is the most overkill Steam Deck I've ever used, mainly because it might not look like anything other than a stock LCD model on the outside, but today we're exploring what really happens to performance when you double the deck's usable memory. I've seen a lot of posts online about the possibility of upgrading the Steam Deck's RAM, but I've never actually seen any performance testing being done. So I wanted to figure out why people are doing this and what's actually changing when it comes to performance. So before I could recommend going out there and doing this upgrade yourself or contacting a shop to do this, we need to test this thing out and see if it's actually worthwhile. Now here I have three Steam Decks, one brand new completely stock LCD model, one OLED model, and our hacked deck running a custom BIOS and 32 gigs of RAM. What we're focusing on today is placing them head to head in a variety of testing scenarios and then seeing the differences. Now, if you're not fully aware of how the Steam Deck utilizes its RAM, it's pretty simple. The Steam Deck has an APU, which you gotta think of as a CPU and GPU combined into a single chip. That means it handles both the general computing tasks and the graphics intensive workloads you take on from gaming. Now, since there is no dedicated video memory like you'd normally see in traditional gaming PCs, the GPU and CPU have to share their memory. All Steam Decks ship with 16 gigs of memory. The OLED model has faster memory at 6400 versus the LCD at 5500. So this means the Steam Deck handles its memory distribution by allowing the CPU to take half and the GPU to take the other half. But in real world scenarios, if by any chance the CPU requires more memory, it will be prioritized and will take this memory away from the GPU, which can ultimately result in gameplay stuttering, frame times go up, FPS can drop, and it really hurts the fluidity of the experience. So imagine you're playing your favorite game that happens to be a little memory hungry. Once you start running out of it, you begin to introduce some of these issues. Now, the main goal behind this idea is figuring out how much this can minimize stuttering on the Steam Deck for those larger AAA games that are more dependent on complex texture rendering or games with memory leaks. So let's fire it up and see what these new chips can do. To start things off, all the handhelds were tested in a room temperature that was controlled at 24C, just to keep things consistent. The first test was with BeamNG. This is a pretty beefy, in-depth vehicle physics simulator that goes beyond your standard racing title so you can imagine it loves to eat RAM. Head-to-head uh, -head across all three decks with the stock LCD on the left, upgraded 32 deck in the middle, and OLED on the right, the first drag test shows pretty nominal gains. A minimal FPS boost over the stock deck, frame times have gone down, but it still can't get near the OLED in performance, let alone beating it out. So it already felt like this upgrade was kind of falling flat, uh, nothing really serious, but that was until I noticed things started to get Interesting. So I ran these tests a few different times in a couple different scenarios per device. And what started to happen was the stock LCD and OLED model both popped system memory usage warnings. Within the performance settings, the game recommends 32 gigs of RAM and we were clearly under the recommendation on two of the three Steam Decks. Uh, once I got the warnings that we were running out of memory, I put all three cars back on the track and this is where the upgraded deck absolutely smoked the decks that had 16 gigs of RAM. So once we reached the state where these devices were running out of memory, I started to notice a lot of stuttering. Both the LCD and OLED model experienced game crashes and none of this was occurring on the Steam Deck with 32 gigs of RAM. Now, this is one scenario that happens to be very RAM dependent, but it did show an improvement. But how do things look in a top 10 AAA Steam Deck game like Hogwarts Legacy. So this is another title that showed reduced stuttering and more consistent frame times with 32 gigs of RAM. If you take a look at the frame times here, you'll notice much less stuttering, especially when loading new textures in an area within the castle. Now, I tested a few other titles that were not as dependent on memory, and it didn't really make much of a difference in those lighter indie titles. Which makes sense since you aren't spilling over that stock 16 gig configuration. I did notice a bit more reliability in heavily modded games like RimWorld or the Fallout games. So another area I want to test was how this was affecting battery life, what our new power draw was, how are the thermals looking, and is there any perceivable increase in fan noise. The chips we used for this upgrade were actually rated at 6400 which is the same speed at which the OLED chips operate at. And obviously there are a variety of variables here that impact these results. The Steam Deck with 32 gigs of RAM has a battery that I've put many charge cycles on. Same goes with the new thermal paste. So take these numbers 
with that into account. After running Cyberpunk on each handheld, we see the OLED pulling the least amount of power while managing to stay the coolest, deliver the most performance, and doing it with the most amount of battery life. With Hades, again, pretty similar with the OLED outperforming both models drawing less than 22 watts and keeping the fans ramped down because of those cooler temps. Vampire Survivors was a pretty even slate amongst devices locked to 60 FPS, but the OLED's efficiency and battery life resulted in way more screen time. So really no perceivable difference in battery life between the LCD models, but it really goes to show how good the engineers behind Valve have optimized the OLED model. And basically to conclude all the results, we saw improvement in very specific memory heavy scenarios or games that were heavily modded. I also couldn't test Starfield because at the time I tested, Bethesda released an update that completely bricked the game on one of the Steam Decks. So a few questions that I haven't fully explored the possibility of diving into yet. The OLED model does use different memory chips than the original that still aren't quite widely available yet. I haven't tested usage on the Linux desktop with applications that are RAM heavy, and I'm not quite sure how this is gonna affect emulation. If these are areas you'd like to see a follow-up for, please drop a comment down below. If there's enough of a demand for it, I will definitely put the time into checking it out. Now, full disclaimer, this is not a simple upgrade. This tweak involves running a custom tweaked BIOS to get the Steam Deck to recognize the upgraded RAM. You also have to micro solder the chips. You have to use Flux. There's a couple things you have to do that might be a little overkill for anyone just wanting a little bit of an upgrade. So at the end of the day, would I say it's worth doing this to your Steam Deck? I would say unless you fall into one of these use cases where you'd find this process worthwhile for the performance, sure. But for like 99% of users out there, you're better off sticking with the stock LCD model or upgrading to the OLED for all the benefits that come with it. If you are interested in getting it done by a repair shop, I'll drop a link down to DOS Electronics, real good people over there. And I'd like to mention our video sponsor, Ridge, which has allowed me to make video ideas like this one become a reality. The Ridge wallet has become my daily go-to. I wanted to switch to something minimal and modern, and this pretty much checked all the boxes. It happened to fit in perfectly. There's over 50 different colors and styles. I'm currently rocking the stonewashed titanium. There's leather and carbon fiber options. This is their Forged Pacific, which has these pretty sick looking aluminum flakes that are infused. Uh, you can opt for an AirTag attachment if you want that full security over tracking everywhere your wallet goes, but I've tried to keep it super slim and it holds up to 12 cards and you can even get a cash strap if you want to. They also have Ridge key cases if you have a car or house key and uh, you wanna keep it organized and compact and free from jingling everywhere. There's a full 99 day return policy, so if you do pick one up and you don't like it, you can send it back with no issues. Uh, so shout out to Ridge. If you're interested in any of that, I have it linked in the description, uh, ridge.com slash Spectre or use code Spectre for 10% off. So that pretty much covers everything. Hope you guys enjoyed and a huge thanks for watching.